We are drowning in a world of adaptations, sequels, prequels, remakes and redos. Hollywood currently seems to be at its peak laziness, especially when it comes to creating new original ideas for film and television. Yet there is a remake that has recently come out in cinemas and has shown us how it should be done. And as you guessed by the title and the thumbnail, I am talking about Dune Part 2. Let's talk about it. Things that I enjoyed. Dune Part 2 picks up exactly where the last film left off. There was no time jump or anything which could have felt potentially jarring. We started off with Paul carrying the dead body of Jameis that he had just killed in the duel in the previous film. Dune Part 1 and 2 felt so cohesive. To be honest, it felt as if they were the same film, and it doesn't really give the impression that Dune Part 2 was a sequel. The transition between the two films was so smooth, it felt as if they were shot together, reminiscent of how the original Lord of the Rings trilogy was shot. Denis Villeneuve. I'm just going to call him Dennis. Nothing fancy. I understand. Nothing fancy. So, Dennis and co handled a notoriously difficult source material and managed to bottle it and make it consumable to fanatical bookworms and the regular moviegoer alike. Frank Herbert gives a lot of introspection with his characters, but not always a huge amount of detail in other areas, and Dennis did such a good job at filling in those blanks with this movie. I know this adaptation isn't 100% true to the book, but you can tell that Dennis genuinely loves the source material by showing us things that only the fans of the books would know, such as how the Fremen bury their dead, or Gurney playing his balisette whilst performing his poem, or the blue scarf that Chani wraps around her before she fought. Side note, when the actor who played Gurney performed with the balisette, it felt very similar to Johnny Cash's performance of Hurt, and I wonder if that was intentional. Let me know in the comments below. I will make you. you can tell that in these moments that he really does have an appreciation for Frank Herbert's writing, yet he still manages to make the film his own thing, you know? You know. What was so well captured within this movie was the scale of the story. It felt grand, it felt massive, it felt like it was the sci-fi epic it was supposed to be. Mission accomplished. The other thing I want to talk about is the cinematography and the editing and the visuals were all stunning and cohesive and worked so well together. There was a shot that really stuck out to me and it was when Paul was walking through this crowd of Fremen and it reminded me of the Game of Thrones scene where Danny has freed Maureen from the slavers. It was stunning and I just wanted to mention it. Alright! The music was amazing, epic. Perfect. It's Hans Zimmer. What else do you expect? I did miss the bank pipes though. I know why they didn't use it because Paul and Jessica are now becoming a part of the Fremen culture, but there was just something that those bank pipes just did to me, you know? You know? Characters and stuff. The Benny Gesserit in this adaptation felt nefarious, they felt conniving, and Dennis did a great job at showing how they literally have their fingers in all the pies. Ooh, what kind of pie? And how that they, as a group, are inevitable. I am the one who knocks. Speaking of the Benny Jezzies, Jessica was awesome, and from her performance you've got the sense that the Atreides aren't the good guys. Rebecca Ferguson did an amazing job at portraying that. I love the fact that her character initially wanted to manipulate the Fremen for survival, and then after becoming a reverend mother, the manipulation was to make the prophecy come to fruition. Rebecca Ferguson has this down to a T. Her performance from stoic mother to telepathic all-knowing reverend mother was excellent. She is such a powerhouse. Also, watch her in Silo, she's brilliant in that. It feels like everything she touches just turns to gold. She's such a good actress. I love you. <laughs> Yeah. Fade's addition to the film was great. I love how he was portrayed. He was scary, unrelenting, unhinged, and an actual threat to Paul and the life on Arrakis. The Harkonnen's black and white binary world felt like it was the embodiment with how they think about life and their morals. There's winners, and there's losers, and that's it. Le who? The her. 
I also love how the film portrays Princess Uralan's historical excerpts. In Frank Herbert's book, it is littered with them and is used to break up the story. And how this is achieved in the film is she uses the Dune equivalent of a voice memo and it doesn't feel like it's an exposition dump. It doesn't feel forced. Like it's part of her character and didn't really feel too on the nose. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Another character thing that I really enjoyed was the helplessness Paul and Jessica had during their time with the Fremen. Jessica had to become the Revan Mother or she would die. Paul had to take the water of life to save Arrakis. This feeling of desperation as well as admiration for the Fremen, it wasn't this Disney Pocahontas sort of story. There was tension and that was so interesting to watch on the big screen. Mm, mm. This movie is good! Paul was one of the best parts of the film for me. He wasn't shown as this great saviour, but rather as a reluctant participant. His transition from being a likeable, vengeful lord to this new fanatical prophet who sees his power using the Fremen's fear and emotions for his benefit was envisioned brilliantly. He wants to save Arrakis and turn it into a paradise, but he also wants revenge. And as we all know, this comes at a cost. He is shown to be no hero but rather a flawed, tortured soul who has to make some very difficult decisions and hope that they are right. Paul's character in this film shows us the perils of fanaticism and the effects of the choices we make. Dennis and Mr. Chamelay captured the essence of what makes Paul Atreides such an interesting character to follow. This is the closest representation to the book that we have so far, but Dennis still got to put his spin on Paul and on the rest of the story, which I really do appreciate. Timothy Chamelay, please just take a bow for your performance as Paul Muad'Dib Ursul Atreides. It was bloody brilliant. He encaptured the character so well, you really felt his conflict, whether it was with his mother, his burdens, or with Chani. Well done. Where do you get this stuff? I don't know, it just comes to me. I have a gift. Changes that I like. A big change that I really, really enjoyed was Chani. She has way more self-autonomy and power in this film, which I really loved. She didn't just blindly accept Paul as Muad'Dib or as Lisan Al Ghaib or follow him around like a little puppy dog. Chani showed him the feminine way because she genuinely saw him as a trustworthy, sincere person. She isn't just loyally following Paul and his decisions and accepting them. She's not fighting for the Prophet Muad'Dib, but for the liberation of her people and her homeworld. Paul is just a byproduct of that, not the reason why. Paul isn't everything to her. She's not this biddable wife constantly at Paul's heels, having his babies and saying, yes, that's a good idea, Paulie. She has her own opinions of him and doesn't accept everything that he does. An example of this would be Paul marrying the Princess Uralan. She doesn't accept that. She goes, no, fuck <coughs> you, see you later. I also loved how tragic their relationship was. They were star-crossed lovers, reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet. Daddy! Wait a minute! They cannot be with one another due to the circumstances outside of their control and what they both deem as the right thing to do. I really, really enjoyed Chani. And well bloody done to Zendaya. It seems to be a theme with you lately that everything you're in is awesome. And hey, two thumbs way, way up for our leading lady. Another change that I liked was Alia. Alia is supposed to be this omnipotent toddler, but Dennis depicts her as this prescient, all-knowing fetus that telepathically communicates to her mother and uses her to converse with her brother, which I thought was so creepy and off-putting and somehow sinister, but it didn't feel out of place. It felt right. Well, that worked out nicely. I also preferred the fact that Paul got his revenge rather than this all-powerful psychic baby having the last laugh on the Baron. It felt way more rewarding because he had to live through the hardship and the trauma of losing his loved ones. So him killing the Baron was just more of a payoff in my eyes. I understand why you prefer the other way, but it's just my personal taste. Mm. Oh, these cookies! I gotta get the recipe from Les. Put that cookie down! Now! The Fremen North-South Divide was another addition that I did really like. It made them feel more of a nuanced, diverse group of people and not this homogenous blob that agreed on everything. So again, this addition was a welcome change in my opinion. Oh, oh that's good. What I didn't like, honestly, nothing really. 
struggling to think here. Um, the lack of bagpipes and where were the pugs? Ah! Are we there yet? Yes. Oh, finally. Final thoughts. This film genuinely has restored my faith in the current film climate. The way the film ended, it felt like they were teeing up for more films down the line, but we'll have to wait and see. I personally felt the same way I did when I watched Lord of the Rings for the first time. I truly do believe we have a classic on our hands, and I understand I might be riding the current hype train, however, I haven't felt this way when watching a film for a long, long time, and I believe that time will cement the way I feel about it. Thank you, Dennis, and the rest of the cast and everyone who helped create this masterpiece. Just go watch this film and let me know what you think. You won't regret it. I give this film a Shyamalan out of 10. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <coughs>